Hi folks, welcome to my Fit Retro Journal. Today, um, I want to talk more about uh, 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 microdrives. Uh, specifically, uh, I, I recently did a video where I showed how, because of uh, the, the nature of microdrives, the QL actually does what's called dynamic file caching, where if you load some data from a microdrive uh, into a program, or the example I did is I actually listed it just to the console. The second time you have to do it, you hit the same file, it's actually already cached in memory. And the QL does it in a very sophisticated way. It uses dynamic file caching, which is what Windows and modern operating systems, modern operating systems do now, uh, back in, in, in 83, 84, when most operating systems did it statically. So the Amiga and the, and the Macintosh, you would set aside some memory for, for a static uh, file cache. But the QL did it dynamically. So I did a video to show you how to do that. I showed you how the QL did that, not how you do that, because uh, you don't have to do anything on the QL. So today, what I want to talk about is, uh, what about executables? Is there a way to load them more quickly from a microdrive into your QL? And it turns out there is. There is a, there's software, uh, and, and this software was prevalent uh, in the 80s on uh, on many other platforms. Well, maybe not. Yeah, on, um, I know the Amiga had it, uh, MS-DOS had a, a ton of it, uh, and um, the Mac actually didn't really have that, which is um, uh, uh, executable compression. And what what that does is it basically takes your executable, so let's say you have an executable that's, uh, let's say it's 300K in size, and uh, um, uh, for th looking at MS-DOS systems that were like, you know, the 640k uh, MS-DOS systems. Uh, so let's say you had a game that was like I don't know 60k, 6, 300k in size, and uh, and but but you wanted to have more than uh, that single game on a disk drive. Uh, one one way you could solve that is you could you could compress that uh, and then slap an executable header on top of that. That was a decompression. Uh, so what it would do is um, so maybe it would. The whole thing would end up being half the size, 150k. So then you load your program from disk, 150k gets loaded into memory. The code executes, and the first thing it does is it takes its, you know, the small 20k portion, takes the rest of the 150k, so the 130k portion, and that's that's the compressed original program. It decompresses it and just throws it right back in memory. You, as the user, would have no knowledge of it. it in fact, it might even be faster than the original because if it only has to read from disk half as much data, which was the bottleneck and the computer is fast enough, the decompression, you may not even notice it. Um, and so that's, uh, and that was prevalent again when, when, when disk was, disks were slow and, and disk space was hard to come by before hard disks became more common. Even with hard disk, you would want to do that. Uh, on the QL, you had a program called Smash, which is what's right here. And what Smash does is it takes a, a QL executable and it'll compress it uh, and uh, then throw a decompressing uh, executable on top of that and make it all into one executable, a smashed executable. And just a little bit of me extra memory is needed. And you can, you know, when you execute a program, it'll expand itself. And the nice thing about that is, A, these microdrives, you can only fit 128K of information on here. So that almost doubles it, let's say 50% compression. You can fit 256K, uh, uh, twice as many applications. Plus, since these tend to have issues sometimes with failure, the less uh, of the sectors on here that you need to worry about, the better. So the fact that there's less information stored on here and it's compressed, uh, so when you load it, you're less likely to hit a fault. Also, it can make load times faster, especially if the decompression is fast enough. So that's what we're going to try today. Now, as originally, I wanted to run this smash on the QL. However, it's it's only a 30k application, but it's set aside 55k of of data uh, partition. Uh, so the, the way the executables are on the QL, they have the sort of data part. And for ZX Simulator, which is 48k code base, I think it's either two or 8k, uh, and that's just the default of digital C. And that's sort of static memory because the ZX Simulator uses the, the common heap on the QL. So I don't know why this is setting as the smash is setting aside so much. Maybe for efficiency, but I couldn't run this on the QL. The QL has 120k of memory, but 32 is taken for a screen. That leaves 96, and then there, there's a bunch for system variables. So you have under 90k available, and 85 or whatever it is just isn't enough to run this. At one point, the other thing with Smash is it requires parameter passing, 
which QDOS implements but didn't give an interface to via super basic of a command shell. And so toolkits were developed, toolkit two, one of them that allows you to, that replaces the exec command exec with the ex command that allows you to ex the name of the program you're running, semicolon, and a parameter list. Uh, the problem with toolkit two is if you only have 128k of um, uh, memory and you don't have the ROM version of it, which I don't, you load it to RAM, it takes up 17k, which is more than 10% of your memory. Uh, and so I found one called KV toolkit. KV, I think, being the person's initials. It's anyway, it's a tiny toolkit that takes up 1400 bytes and that has the its own exec command. So uh, I was really happy to find it, but I still can get it to work. So I am going to use the QL emulator to smash uh, ZX, the ZX simulator, which is 48k in size. And then I'm going to copy it uh, to SD card and then onto this um, actual microdrive cartridge and then see how long it takes. So it, it, it may be that if 48k gets uh, shrunk to 24k, uh, it might load faster from the tape, but then the decompression might take uh, its own time. So there might not be any speed gain, but that, that's still a win because I could fit more on here uh, or it might be slightly faster. Then once I've done that and demonstrated that, the other thing I want to look at is for the ZX81, there is also a um, fast loader and it's called OTLA. I don't know what the O stands for, but I assume tape load accelerator. And uh, I'm going to try to once I get going back here, once I have the ZX simulator loaded, I will load my Battleship game, which is about 13K in size, and we'll time how long that takes. And then I'm going to try to see if I can beat that load time on here. Um, I think it, it, it's, it'll take about 20 seconds or so to load from Microdrive uh, into ZX simulator. Uh, uh, and I know that the tape uh, for Battleship, the WAV file, uh, the audio file is about six minutes long. So how much can a uh, tape load, loader, load accelerator for these old tape-based systems, how fast can it speed that up? Can it beat the QL? So I'll have a little, little competition, loading the same basic program into both the my ZX81 ROM emulator and then the actual ZX, ZX81 or Time Series 1000 and see which one uh, can do it faster. Um, so let's do that today. Uh, well, that's... Uh, what we're going to do today. So let's do that now by going on Windows uh, to uh, first smash some uh, smash the ZX simulator into a smaller executable size. So here's a wiki web page on ex executable compression uh, uh, software. And you can see that if we scroll down here, um, that uh, for it had, it had one for CPM, but for DOS, it just had a ton of them. And uh, I'd be interested to see which one is the best one to use. Uh, so if you have any thoughts on that, please let me know. It's got other ones too. I don't know what new executable or portal executable is all about. Um, but uh, Mac OS only had two and they're both for installers. Um, uh, so they don't really have one where you can, you can create installs, but you can't actually smash something like Word. But it kind of makes sense because the Mac was weird. It had this, uh, these two parts of a file, the data and the resource fork, and it does access its resource fork constant like a database. And so in order to create a smash on the Mac, you really have to not only decompress it in memory, but either throw it on a RAM disk or throw it uh, in a directory, a temporary directory. I wish I had thought about or had more, had more knowledge of smashers uh, back then, or I call them smashers because that's what the QL calls it. Uh, because I might have written, back in the 90s when I was writing Mac software, I might have written one, because uh, I can kind of imagine how I would write it. Uh, Commodore 64 and VIC-20 have these. Now, I, I, I did the VIC-20 have a, a disk drive? I know the 64 did. Commodore 64, so are these tape loaders, like the OTLA program I was talking about, or are these actually speeding up the disk drive? Um, and then Commodore Amiga, I kind of looked at all of these. I didn't find necessarily all of them, but... Um, Imploder was the one that seemed the most reasonable. It was done around either late 89 or, I mean, around 90, it was in either 91, somewhere between 89 and 91. Um, and that seems to be the more, well, the one that I could actually, um, that had a lot of documentation on it. I haven't tried to write it yet. There's no QL in here because the QL is just kind of tiny. Okay, so anyway, uh, so this is QLA, and I'm running this. If you look at the configuration, uh, this setting for 120 and 12 speed and 
1200. Uh, I've done timings and when I run ZX Simulator on QLA using this speed, it runs almost the same speed it does on my actual QL. So this is about real time. 640K of memory, and I only have the NFA ROM, which allows me to read Windows directory files in my Windows uh, hard disk. So let's, um, let's boot it up. And um, when you run the QLA editor, QLA2 editor at this speed, um, the micro drives aren't so robust, the micro drive emulation, because there's a timing issue. So I tend to stay away from micro drives when I'm running it at this speed. Uh, and just use the Winchester drive, so the, the, the disks, my hard disk on my uh, Windows 7. Um, so uh, there's this mass program, and I actually have it on one of my Winchester drives. Uh, but I do want to uh, load this toolkit because I don't actually have a toolkit loaded. So just to show you this cool toolkit, I'll load NDD2 uh, QVTK boot. I have to change it slightly because this um, microdrive image actually came from my QL and it is set for MDD7. And so if I change this to MDD2, oops, I change this to MDD2, I can then run it. Now, this thing actually does not give you any feedback that says, you know, uh, QVTK um, loaded or run. But um, if you if it say print TT dollar, it tells you that you have QVTK 1.3 for Only 1400 bytes, so it's very, very tiny. Let me go into a different screen mode here. So again, this is what I have on my MDV2 drive. And so I'm going to actually load Smasher so, uh, from my Winchester drive. It's called Tiny Toolkit Executable. And for whatever reason, it actually wants, unlike EX and Toolkit 2, which you can just then type in, uh, you know, win uh, three smash. If I do this, this is going to say I don't know what this is. So it wants it in quotes. I had to discover this on my own. The documentation didn't talk about that, or didn't wasn't very really clear. And then in quotes, you give it uh, the the parameters. And so here I want to take win eight. So my win. So uh, my ZX is on uh, is on my win eight device, and then I'm going to also throw that. Uh, um, I'll throw it back on Win3 ZX Smash. How's that? <clears throat> uh, and then uh, I'll copy it to the MDV once I'm done. All right, so I'm going to do that. And this is going to come up with yeah, a screen. And so this, uh, I think, is going to take a little bit. So I'm probably going to fast forward through this. And it's finished. So um, what I'm going to do, so first we ought to try, so if I go exec M, uh, win8zx, the original one, we can see that um, yep, it runs it. Quit. Now if I exec win3zx smash, and run that, You can see you get the cursor back first and then it runs it, but it's about the same speed. So, um, so the decompression isn't very bad at all. So, um, yeah, so let's uh, copy this uh, file, smash file onto my MDV2 drive. And yeah, like I said, this sometimes uh, uh, complains about, uh, and this is not because of the bad drive, it's just that, the emulation is slow and uh um okay so let's copy it uh uh from win3 zx smash to mdv2 zx smash and hopefully this will copy but yeah because the emulation when you slow it when you do such a big delay it kind of screws up the timing for the micro drive which requires a certain timing so it does really badly in the emulator. On real micro drives, you don't get these kind of problems. And the V drive does a pretty good job in its emulation. But here, I'm, 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 I'm slowing it down. If I, if I run this at the normal speed, which is, I think, about four to six times faster than normal QL, the, micro, the emulated micro drives work really well. Um, so this is just going to take its sweet time to copy it. Ah, oh, it finished it. Good. Uh, I'm not even going to try to run it from here, because it's just going to give me a 
tape load problems. And so you can see that we have it on here. So let's go on to the, um, my actual QL. And uh, actually, well, let's copy it first over, right? So I have this, so I can quit this. Um, I open that up, quit my emulator, and then go into the actual emulation directory and uh, grab the MDV is called test and it's under temp. So yeah, copy that over. So I should have the latest and greatest. And I'm going to take that and uh, go to my QL to work on that. All right, so let's go do that so I can remove it. Okay. I'm back and um, I've already done the copying. I copied CX smashed uh, from my SD card to my actual micro drive. So you have it right there. So I have both of these on here. Uh, so I'm going to do the, the test for ZX smash first to see how long it takes. Um, and uh, then I will give uh, uh, ZX a try. Uh, one thing is if you run it uh, in EX exec W mode, which is what, uh, okay, so that was pretty good. So that took, uh, it took about 22 seconds. That was pretty fast. Um, but if when you run in exec W mode, the, the decompressor actually still takes memory up. So you actually lose a little bit of memory. Let me just load in a small program. Uh, load MDV2 banner. Uh, oops just to make sure we can actually run a program, but it may not be able to uh, load uh, some of the larger programs because um, uh, ZX simulator uh, is sort of maxing out memory. And it can load a 16K program like the uh, Battleship, but the, but it may not be able to load it in uh, when, when you, you smashed it because it it took up, uh, the, the decompression program took up some memory. Now, if you use it, run it in exec mode, you might fare better than, than that, but uh, Let's see if we can load in the banner program. Oh, look, it loaded in. Does it run? Three both. Yep, runs just fine. Okay, so that's the Smash version. And it seems like it's running the uh, uh, the banner program just fine. Um, and so let me just, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reboot the machine so we can get a fair uh, look at this. Um, and uh, always, uh, they say always uh, take out the micro drive. All right, so now we're going to uh, try to do this with uh, the ZX simulator. Oops, that's the wrong one. Doesn't keep track of ice, obviously, is restarted. Um, and uh, if we get lucky, uh, we get a nice clean uh, load from ZX simulator. This 48k version, and we'll be able to compare 22 seconds versus. Uh, all right, so we're going to do this. Uh, oops, and uh, we're going to load this in. At, here we go. And so um, I got I hit it at the 25 second mark, so it'll be 47 seconds uh, to beat. 47 or better to tie or beat, and otherwise it'll be slower. So. Um, So it just hit the 47 second mark. Okay, it's taking a little longer. Now I've timed this before at 20, yeah, okay, so, so it took 30 seconds, 29 seconds, yeah. Uh, and that's, I think, uh, uh, can be, um, let's do it one more time, because I know I've, 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 I've gotten it to go faster than that. Um, and uh, part of that has to do with the fact that um, when it finds it on the uh, so there was 29 seconds I've had it, I've had it going uh, uh, a little faster when I've uh, uh, loaded it let's see if I can't get it to load it to slightly faster so let's do it one more time so 22 seconds is the time to beat and 35 so if it hits uh, on the even zero minute mark, we're doing good. Um, but yeah, you know, there's, there's always a little bit of variability of when it finds it at the top of the, uh, the sector or when it has to go all the way around. 
Uh, so we'll see how this goes. Yeah, so there we go. Yeah, so this was 24 seconds. So I knew it could go faster because I remember loading this last the time I did the test on this micro drive. So 22 versus 24. So it's it's slightly um, faster for the Smash program. But now let's actually test load MDV2 Battleship because we want to compare it to um, this guy. And uh, let's do this on 30 seconds. Here we go. So one thing with uh, the ZX simulator, it's kind of inefficient in loading files because the first thing it does is it kind of uh, runs through the whole file one one time to get its size and then it loads it in. Uh, it should be able to rely a little bit on the... Uh, well, it's, the thing is it's not actually loading the file into memory. What it's doing is it's, it's seeking uh, in chunks of... I forget how many chunks it is. Um, and so... Uh, so it's kind of an inefficient load, um, so it's not really a fair comparison to uh, uh, to how the well how this one will end up loading it. So it's not very efficient. I, I keep thinking I should, and okay, that's good. So we're at the coming up on the minute mark. And here it just missed a sector, so you, you get you get to pay the price of seven seconds. Um, yeah. So we're at. Oh, come on. Yep. So. Uh, one minute 24 seconds but let's do more accurate and so this this is the, the, the program should run yeah uh, but let's do one more accurate test before we uh so let's load mdv4 uh battleship so now we're getting it straight from uh the actual that's uh, mdv6 i believe so we're going to get it straight from uh, an SD card via the V drive. And so let's see if this does better. There we go. And we'll call it quits on that. So it was a minute and 23 uh, seconds, uh, 24 seconds, I think. Almost a minute and a half to read it in. Now again, the this uh it's three it's it's six it's five minutes and 41 seconds so it's definitely faster than coming from a tape but we're going to do the fast loader and uh so it's been at 30 seconds already um yeah so that was 43 seconds so that's definitely quicker because of uh um uh reading it from the uh v drive so uh, 43 seconds um uh com compared to uh a minute and 20 uh, some seconds right all right so let's go back on to the windows machine and see if we can speed the this load up from right now it's five minutes and 41 seconds all right here we go so i've got this otla program loaded um you can see this is the website for it, uh, and I maybe it's somewhere obvious, but I haven't figured out yet what the um, uh, what it actually stands for, other than I assume tape load accelerator. Um, it has uh, this was written, I think, in O. Uh, if you look at the downloads, the latest ones were in 08, so 13 years ago. Um, it has uh, Synchro Spectrum, Amstrad, MSX, and ZX81. I know the ZX81, I saw this on a form. It was one of the later ones they added. Uh, I'm going to use the 16K model. Um, these you should leave alone, but you can play around with the bit sizes. So I'm actually going to create one for each bit size for the um, my Battleship game. Um, I'm gonna, uh, so what you need to do, uh, and I did play around with this. It took me a little bit to figure out that new add is the key here and you go to programs uh, and I have all these P files, this is my battleship game. So I can load it in 
And now I can uh, do that and it, lo it saves it to the battle, um, the output directory, uh, which is right here. <clears throat> and I'm gonna name this uh, six for six, for the BPS rates on that. And then I can put on five and create another one. So this is five. And I'm gonna do one for each. Uh, boom, four, and then the fastest. And again, I'm just gonna go fastest to slowest to uh, see which one is the best. Uh, they range in size from uh, 11 seconds, you can see right down here, to uh, 18 seconds. So either, either method is not that bad. Now if I go to, um, programs and look at the actual wave file for Battleship, five minutes, 41 seconds. So 341 seconds down to two, between 18 and 11. If you do the math on that, um, uh, 341 seconds, 1% uh, would be 34 seconds. So half a percent is 17 seconds. So even the, the, the worst, uh, so even the, the six will, will give it almost half a percent. Um, so uh, going back to um, TLA output, uh, I'll do one more just to see. I'll, I'll pick four, which is kind of in the middle. Uh, and uh, I will do a new one and pick a, my elite, the other program, just to see what size it would be. So, okay, let me do that. And that becomes elite. And so that is four and elite is, for four, it's nine seconds in size. Wow, that's small. Uh, and so what is the elite? Um, elite wave is two, okay. Yeah, let's do one more uh, chess, but my chess, there it is. So that's almost six minutes. So I wonder what that'll do. Uh, okay, we'll go tools, there we go. And so we'll pick chess also at four, we'll do another new one, pick chess. So again, that's almost six minutes and we'll, there it is. Uh, and this is four. And this is 12 seconds, wow. So that went from five, uh, 557, so. 357 times point 20, uh, 0.025. Yeah, so about 30%, 40, uh, I, I'm sorry, three, three, a third of a percent. <laughs> uh, I, we'll see if these work. So uh, we'll leave it at that, and uh, let's see if we can try to load these into my ZX81. I'm gonna go with Battleship from uh, fastest to slowest, and once I, uh, finish. Um, I, don't, I won't load these in. I just wanted to see what the middle of the road number were, but uh, and see if it can load Battleship. All right, so let's do that. Okay, now we have the ZX81 screen with the K cursor, not the emulated version of the QL. So, um, and I've got the, it's going to be hard for you to see this, but I have the uh, Battleship 3, which was the fastest 11 second version. Um, I forget what the bit rate was, but it was like over 12. 12,000 bits per second. And um, so, um, yeah, let's see if we can load it in. So I'm just going to say load here. And it's only uh, 15, uh, 11 seconds. Uh, so let's give it a try. Let's see if this works. <clears throat> and what do we get? Nope, did not see it. It's maxed out at, uh, yeah, so it did not work. Okay, let's try it one more time. I'm gonna have to reboot this, I assume. Load. And 11 seconds of magic, here we go. And no, it's already crashed. Okay, 
So that is just not good. Okay, fair enough. Let's try and let's, so let's try the next one, which is the four setting, which was eleven hundred, I think. Load. So that one is thirteen seconds. So we're going to start it up now. Oh wow! Look at that. That's what it looks like. Holy crap! That's that's some weird looking. Oh my god, <laughs> it loaded. Wow, 13 seconds is just aston astonishing. So 13 seconds uh, from five minutes. Well, let me see if is it actually the program run. Yep, it's the Battleship program. Uh, let's break out of this. Can we list uh, 3,000? Yeah, it's there, and I think we can go up. It's the whole program, yeah. Wow, look at that. That is amazing. All right, let's load something up. So that, that makes this a very usable computer. All right, so I'm going to uh, new this. And I'm going to just say load another one. So four, yeah, let's try the other fours. So four, and this time I'm going to do um, chess. That ended up being 12 seconds. Here we go. But so 13 seconds versus 43 seconds. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty impressive. Uh, even with file caching, it would take, yep, yeah, that, that ran. Wow. Now, granted, you're getting a digital signal, right? So these these wave files uh, digitally um, generated and created. Uh, this is just in fast mode right now. Thinking about that, uh, so it's going to come back. It's not crashed or anything. Um, it's yeah. So you have, you have the board, and this is please stand by. All right, we're not going to wait around for that. We're going to say new, and we're going to load our elite game. So, so that one goes from two something to nine. So, so obviously there's a header associated with that, but let's try that. Load, and we're going to run the elite game. Nine seconds. I mean, it zooms through there, and I that's just phenomenal. Look at that. Yeah, wow. This is... I mean, that's an impressive piece of software, OTLA. I don't know what the O stands for, but tape load, load, loader, load, loader accelerator, loading accelerator. I mean, it, it makes this computer like as good as an, an emulator. You literally, you're online. Uh, you just have to run the MP3 uh, or the WAV file, and it's like that. Uh, the, it's just whatever they're using. They're not doing decompression because there's no way the ZX81 could decompress fast enough uh start i guess um but yeah that's phenomenal look at that so here's my uh zx81 game elite uh this is the one that i haven't finished quite yet but yeah uh otla it actually beat the ql <laughs> zx81 beat the ql in, in loading a basic program and even you know loading a, uh, um, a 16k uh zx simulator smash 16k versus uh 13k or equivalent 16k on the zx81 uh, battleship 13 versus 24 seconds and if you if you looked at the ql you saw that at about 22 seconds the screen cleared that was when it was done reading from the micro drives and it got to uh um uh, finally doing the decompression right so fire uh so i'm going to end there today so that was kind of interesting uh i would not have expected the zx81 to end up beating the ql and loading program times uh considering the tapes would take much longer unfortunately i don't have a good tape deck i've got the sony unit there i may in the future see what happens if i actually record this audio on a tape and then try to run it perhaps you have to use the the 
the slower bit rates, but even if I use the slower bit rates, uh, so the six setting was um, uh, 7,300 7, bits per second. Uh, that still is 18 seconds of recorded. But there, I think you're going to run into trouble with all the variability of, of analog audio. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I rec I'll, I'll put a link of the OTLA software if you're using either a ZX81, it does it for a Spectrum, uh, Amstrad, and an MSX. That's just uh, my first uh, encounter with that kind of software is just phenomenal. Um, so, uh, yeah, thanks for joining me today, and uh, I'll see you next time.